Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and welcome to the 28th video in a series of game development tutorials on how to make your own Resident Evil style game in Unity. This tutorial we'll be covering how to move back and forth between scenes using global control. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload. Feel free to leave a comment and drop a like. We also have a Patreon page where you can help be a part of this channel. You can also find all the scripts and the assets to this series there too, along with plenty of other things. You can also now join as a free member. Now, on with the tutorial. So right now, the scene we have is the door scene. And currently it will only ever take us to the third scene, which is that second area that we have created. We need to put some coding in place so as we can repeatedly use this scene to go back and forth between our two main scenes. And then we can also use that to go to other scenes that we build up further along the way. So ultimately, how do we do this? Well, we have a script at the moment called Global Control. And I'm sure when we originally created this script, I mentioned that we will be able to use this script further to contain different elements and different things and different aspects. At the moment, we use it for things like inventory and pausing and unpausing the game. We're now going to use this very script to be able to control what scene we go to. And the way we do that is very similar to how we currently have all of this in the global control. So what we'll do is we'll declare two variables, one where we're moving to and another one where we're moving from. This kind of future proofs things a little bit as well, so the script knows where we're going and where we've come from, and we can use that to our advantage. So how do we do that? Well, let's say public static. And remember, we're using static simply because we need other scripts to access this particular uh, script. So what we'll do is we'll have it as an integer, because it's going to be a scene number, and we'll have it called move to scene. And the next one will be public static int, and we'll have this called previous scene. And we can go a little bit further if we want to, if we want to visibly see what information is contained inside these variables. I will do it, but you don't necessarily have to do this section. It's entirely up to you. Uh, we'll serialize field. And it will also be an integer, and we'll just call it internal destination. And this is basically going to be equal to the move to scene variable. So then obviously we'll do the same again. Uh, serialize field, integer, and we'll just have it as internal previous. Like so. If I can spell it. <laughs> there we go. And... To get this working accurately, all we need to do is go to our update method and say internal destination equals move to scene. It's got it right there for us. So that also means that internal previous is also equal to previous scene. And we can save that script. So now we need to feed that information into here from another script. So how do we do that? Well. Let's go back into Unity and let's go to our first area that we created. Once it's finished compiling, shouldn't take a moment. And that area contains the trigger that takes us basically to this scene, doesn't it? So we can use that to our advantage to use that trigger to feed information into the scene, into the script, I should say. Come on, Unity. Right, so let's go to our scenes. Let's go to area 001. And let's go to door trigger down here. And let's click on this one here. So area 001 door. And let's go into that script. And down the bottom where we have this section saying transition to door, we always want to go to scene two. Scene two is where we have our door. However, we need to feed information into that global control script first. So what we'll say is before we transition and fade out, we'll say global control dot move to scene equals three semicolon. And it also means that we have to have global control. And that will be the previous scene. So dot previous scene equals one. 
semicolon. And the reason we have one here is because number one is the scene we're currently in. So we can now save that script. This is where things start to get not complicated, but we do have to deviate from what we've done previously. And what I mean by that is when we go into our second scene, so area two, let's now set up the trigger here. The trigger that we have previously worked just fine to take us to our scene, uh, but we do need to add a different script. The reason I say we need to add a different script is quite obvious because the script that we did have on there, which I've removed, so remove component, the script we had on there would have just looped us back around. So we need to create a different one. So if we go to doors and that script we've just been in, A01 door, hold control, press D to duplicate, and let's rename it to A02 door. And then open that script up. It will function the exact same as area 01 door. However, we just need to change the global control section move to and previous scene. Before we do that, let's change the class name up here to A02 door. The reason being is because the class name has to match the script name. Now it does, so all of our errors have disappeared. And we need to say move to scene is now one and previous scene is now three because the scene we're in is three and the ultimate scene we want to get to is scene one. So let's save that script. Once it's saved, let's head into Unity. And we need to attach a 002 door script onto the door trigger. And then we just need to set the fade out. So let's go to our canvas, fade out onto there. Perfect. So let's save that scene now. Okay, so we've got these in place. Seems to be working okay. The next thing we need to do is we need to make sure that our door scene knows where we're going. So that means going into our door transition scene. And we need to go to the door control and let's go into wooden door. This will now be able to basically control what we do because instead of having load scene three here, if you remember, we go, we trigger the door, it takes us through it and it will always take us to scene three. So obviously if we we're trying to get back to scene one, we couldn't. This is where that global control script comes in handy. In this section where we say scene manager dot load scene and the number three, delete the number three and put global control dot move to scene. So whatever variable is stored within that, it will take us to that scene number. So if it's one, then it will take us to scene one. If it's three, it takes us to scene three. If it's two, it will just infinitely loop that door scene, which is not what we want. So we just need to make sure it's never two, at least at this present moment. Finally, head back into Unity. We now need to attach our global control script to this scene so it knows what we're doing. So go onto globals, global control, drag onto door control. We don't need to set any variables because there is nothing to set. So let's test all of this in sequence. Let's save this scene. Head to area one, press play, and let's go through this door. Now, at the end of this test sequence, what will happen is glaringly obvious, but that will lead us nicely into the next tutorial. So for now, let's just check that this works so we can go through this door. Shouldn't be a problem at all. And there we go, so we're in our second room. So now, let's go back through the door. And it will take us back to the first area that we were in. But, you'll see something a little strange as it happens. There, so it does indeed take us to the correct place. However, it doesn't take us to the correct setting. It, nothing is maintained from our previous scene. So, that's what we're going to do in the next tutorial. It's going to be all about area placement scripting. And what I mean by that is we need a script to remember where we were previously in the room and what we've maybe picked up. And we need to do one for each individual area. So these kind of things are important uh, when it comes to Resident Evil games is if you've killed a zombie or picked up a weapon, it needs to remember what that information is when you change scenes. So remember to subscribe, 
and click on that notification bell so you can stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series. And hopefully, I will see you in the next one.